Very nice. Um, yeah. They've all left again. Oh. <laughs> no, I haven't. Just, yeah, if you can let them in. A bit all. 29. Good evening, everyone. We're just loading up here. I just just before we start, I just put a, a quick question there in the chat, just to throw in your name and your club, maybe from, just to give us an idea. Um, mostly as I know, <laughs> um, which is great, um, but some as I don't. So if you want to just throw your name in the chat and just you know, wherever, Michelle under eight, where and wherever club you're from, please. Okay, thank you. Man United. Oh, Man United. yeah, yeah, <laughs> starting early. Yeah, we will. Yeah, <laughs> we will have no comment about the weekend, Ellie. No comment. <laughs> okay, so while everyone's just throwing their name in the chat uh, and their club, I just want to um, welcome everyone this evening to, um, I suppose, FBI Fingo <laughs> webinar. Um. Thanks for giving up your time for the next eight hour um, for the evening. Thanks again for giving us in the loads and loads of questions for Jamie, which is fantastic. We'll be here till about 12, Jamie. I hope you're on overtime. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we have some great questions. Um, I want to thank Jamie for, for coming on uh, this evening because I know she has a busy schedule. Um, but uh, she'll, she'll tell you all about that now when we when, when we get going. Um, great to see uh, so many coaches, male, female, working within the women's game. We could have secretaries on, child welfare officers on. I'm not too sure, but it's great to see uh, a, a, a good number on this evening. So I'll kick it off first. Um, I'll um, say hello to Jamie Tanker. Thank obviously as well. Me, the two staff members and might be three or four of them on uh, as well. Uh, so Jamie, first of all, thanks for coming on um, and for giving up your time this evening. No um, I know you have a, a busy schedule and it's great to have you on, um, especially this week being International Women's Week. Um, it's um, really important that we we push the women's game, whether it be with webinars, coach education, um, question and answer sessions, which is fantastic. So I'll start off the evening. Um, I know currently at the moment you're with a lovely team where my auntie and uncle live in Birmingham, <laughs> Birmingham City ladies. So, um, and I know you didn't start there. It would have started at Grassroots um, at Swords Manor back in the day. Yeah. And I was just wondering if you just want to give us a little bit of a background of how it all started and how you got involved. Yeah, no, listen, I uh, just want to say hello to everyone. And again, just want to echo what, what Sharon said. Um, thanks for having me on and all the questions. Yeah, thanks for it for putting them in and um, but yeah so I started playing when I was five so a good couple of years ago now <laughs> um yeah so started couple. Swords Manor. Huh? a couple of years <laughs> <laughs> a fair few now and um, yeah no started with Swords Manor and um, with the boys team and um, originally my sister played um so she's about four years older than me so she played um yeah I think one day I just went down to watch and I think I instantly fell in love with it and asked my mom and dad could I go down. Um, so I went down to play with the boys team in Swords Manor. Um, I think it was just like an academy at the time of a Sunday morning and then got into um, a team um, and played with them for a couple of years. Um, I loved, loved playing with the boys. I think it toughened me up a bit. Um, so yeah, I was a bit, bit devastated to leave them. But um, I think it was 12 or 13 at the time. That was the rule that I had to go to um, a girls team. Um, so then I went straight to Shelburne and um, so I played there for a couple of years and um, really enjoyed Shelburne as well obviously I played there for for a while and then I wanted to play in the Women's National League obviously that's the step you, you want to go to if you, if you want to kind of progress in your career so yeah I played with Rohini United and then ironically um, Rohini and Shelburne merged back together so I was back with Shelburne and um, where I started with the girls team so yeah Played there and um, really enjoyed my time there. Played in the Women's National League for a couple of years. Um, and then last year, as Sharon said, I got my first contract with Birmingham. Um, so I'm here now. I'm really, really enjoying it. 
That's brilliant. And just regarding your coaches that you would have had then, obviously at Swords or Rohini or Shells, was there a, was there much of a difference, say, in their in their coaching styles and their of 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 when they were coaching you? Well, my first coach was my dad, so <laughs> I've made a big sense since that. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he was my first coach, so um, and then yeah, so I went to Shelburne. I um, I had a few coaches there. I think one that stands out was Casey McQuillan. I um, had him, yeah. had him with Shells and then Rahini as well. Um, yeah, I had a few coaches. Um, and then obviously with the Ireland setup, had yourself as well. Um, so oh, I've been. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, I've had a few with international and um, club level, but it's, it's, it's interesting to see how different coaches work and working with different, different coaches. Obviously, you learn, you learn from them and to have different, different coaches, you take stuff off each of them. So. And I think working at grassroots level uh, for those coaches that are on the call and, and maybe some of those coaches here that are working in the elite level, it's two totally different things. The, you know, the, the football language is different. The organisation is different. There's more analyst stuff, obviously, when you get into the elite part of the game of analysing the teams and stuff, you know. So um, thanks for that. So just a couple uh, start on the questions because there's a load and I'm sure there'll be more in the chat. OK, mm. so um, Celine from Lusk United said, um, what advice would you give any young female player who dreams of becoming a professional footballer? Yeah, that's a, a question I get a lot. But I think yeah. for me, it's all about belief. I think you have to believe in yourself. Um, because if you don't believe in yourself, then it, it's hard for other people to do that, managers, whatever. So I think it all comes back to you and, and having that belief that you can do it, having that dream, that drive within yourself that you know you're good enough to be on a team. You know you're good enough to, to start a game or to be in a squad. So yeah, for me, I think that's that's the big one. You have to believe in yourself to make it. And I think I think when you speak to Scotland, I think Katie did an interview and I think she says in the interview, you know, you have to dream big, <clears throat> excuse me, dream big. And as you said there, believe in them dreams and never, ever give up on what you want to do. And if you want to be the coach at the highest level and if it takes you 20 years to get there, you will get there, <laughs> you know, yeah. and if, you're, if you want to just coach at grassroots. And you and you want to coach maybe the the fifteens or sixteens, and you're only at the under eights or under nines. You will get there. You will get there. Yeah. Whether it be through education, whether it be um, looking at other people's sessions, but you will get there in the end. So don't give up on your dreams. There's any coaches on this course, and even players, if you've got aspirations to get to where either Jamie is, or you know, start your coaching journey, or start your um <laughs> your football career in the national teams. Just don't give up on it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I think like whether it's as you said, playing and wanting to get to a world cup or wanting to start the next game or wanting to coach a certain team i think a dream is a dream and if you have that you just need to strive keep keep striving for it until until you get it really brilliant um ellie's put a question in the chat and she's also um has one earlier on which is great so she wants to know how did it and this is great how did it feel in that moment when the whistle went against scotland I was crying. If that makes sense, I don't know about anyone else. But Dave, you'll tell your story. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I remember um, about twenty seconds before Courtney, there was a free kick, and I asked the ref. I said, "What's what's left?" And she said, "When when Courtney kicks the ball, it's over." So I just turned. I think it was Neil Fat. It turned. It's it's all over. So I said, "Everyone, get up!" <laughs> Courtney kicked the ball out. So she just kicked it out, and I just remember. Like in the moment, I just, I was crying. Like it was just uh, all of this emotion just come, came over all of us. And I think watching like videos back of it, you see everyone's reaction. Everyone's running, everyone's going everywhere. And it's just such, such an amazing experience to be a part of. And yeah, that was obviously a dream of all of ours and we knew we could do it. And yeah, to, to finally do it was amazing. And I think... Like after when we were on the on the pitch, it was obviously a moment I'll never forget. And then when I went up to my family, I just started crying again. And they all <laughs> started crying. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I, I, I think for coaches I think for coaches back here and obviously pre, pre previous players, I think a lot of us had the same emotion. And I won't I won't lie to you, you know. Um it was really, I suppose obviously I I've been I've been there at the national level way before Jamie, <laughs> way before Jamie and paving the pathway for, you know, for themselves now to play and they got younger players coming through and it was tough back then, but to have that moment then of actually saying everything we did back then mm -hmm. was for this moment, it 
it was just unbelievable I have to say yeah, unbelievable absolutely. And like, thanks as you said it's not it wasn't just for us it was for people that as you said paved the pathway to to get to that moment it wasn't just that game it was it was years before that work that obviously yourself and, and other players and coaches done and yeah I think yeah so I feel like you all felt that as well when the final yeah. was over it was just yeah. a relief and uh, yeah it, it was amazing Thanks for that. And Ellie, I was, you were actually there, which is fantastic. So I'm sure oh, you... brilliant. <laughs> yeah, she was there. Yes, yeah, so she said it there in the chat. All right. Thanks a lot. Um, Sinead said, it's from Columbus, Um, what do you think the most challenging aspect of the World Cup will be, apart from playing two teams ranked in the top 12 in the world? And then we have a second part to that question. Yeah, like as you as you mentioned there, obviously it's gonna to be tough playing playing those um those teams. But I think to be fair, we're at a World Cup, so I think every every game is gonna to be tough. Um but yeah, the most challenging maybe maybe the travel aspect of it. I think we're the, the team that has to travel the most, but I mean I don't think we should kind of get bogged down on that type of stuff. I think we just it's our first World Cup. We need to go into a positive and yeah, just take take it as it comes and I think we have such a good backroom staff as well like our doctor physio and they'll all be kind of linking in with us how to prepare obviously we'll know but they'll have obviously good advice to give us um preparing for this because obviously everyone's this is their first time for everyone so yeah I think we'll all come in together and, and hopefully yeah we'll do good fantastic and uh, the second part of that was obviously what what part are you most looking forward to yeah, I think just wearing the green jersey at a World Cup. Um, I mean that just even saying that is is yeah, it's just a yeah. dream, isn't it, for anyone to to wear your the green jersey for Ireland at a World Cup. I mean, it's gonna be absolutely amazing. But for me, yeah, just personally get on the squad and then hopefully, hopefully play. And I think when it comes to playing for Ireland, I think the favorite part of it really for me is singing the national anthem. I think that's that's something that will always be be like such a good feeling for me and um I think hearing the national anthem um at a world cup is going to be special absolutely and, and now that the stadium obviously they moved the stadium because of the crowds that's yeah. even you know which is which is fantastic um I think Avian there has one there uh, if just follows on from this one how how far can Ireland go in the world cup <laughs> oh we're winning it <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. No, to be fair, we're, we're gonna we're gonna do our best, and I think, yeah. as I said about coaching staff and and backroom staff, they're gonna have us well prepared, and yeah, we'll, we'll do our best and try to get as far as we can. Brilliant. And um, Vanessa from Malahide said, "Did you obviously did you play with the girls or boys team growing up?" So, at the start there. Yeah, so I played with the boys team at Swords Manor up until I was I think twelve or thirteen. Then I went to the girls team with Shelburne. So. Um, Stephen from um, how can we do better in keeping girls interested in football as they get older great question yeah yeah it is a, it is a great question um, I was thinking about this today like it's it's difficult obviously because everyone each individual is different um, I think I think we do have to kind of take advantage of the situation that we're in right now with the senior team that we're at a World Cup um, so we, that's visible to to younger players that there's a pathway if you want to if you want to play for your country if you want to play at major tournaments I think the visibility is there now that you can go on and do that and um, so I think this is the best time to stay involved and to encourage that and um, because that pathway is there to even to even to go professional to go to England to go to to Europe to play professional football and um, I think that's more visible now and I think we everyone needs to kind of take advantage of that and really really push that and obviously going to a world cup will help too yeah and I know here um obviously within the FEI and and, and Fingal uh, we, we, we're going to be pushing the women's game within the summer you know like the webinars we're doing yeah. now and all this week regarding the women's programs um, now not just in soccer it'll be every sport um going forward yeah. and then leading into the world cup we'll be having girls festivals we'll be having coach education workshops for um parents and coaches that which i see on this as well again to upskill um 
them to be better coaches and uh which is brilliant i like this question from holly uh, in scary <laughs> what team do you support growing up and what age did you first start playing <laughs> you can tell them all jamie tell them all what, what team there you go there oh, you I go like the, that game at the weekend <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely um yeah i support liverpool and i started when i was five I think that was the question wasn't it yeah yeah five yeah, yeah. brilliant um, Michelle from Sword Celtic, um, how are you? So, how are you planning for the future after your playing career finishes? Which is a good question. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a good question. I think a lot of players have to have to think about that now. Um, so, I am currently a personal trainer, um, and I am currently doing my UA for B um, coaching badges as well. Um, so I think just kind of getting as, as much as I can done with that um, and, yeah, potentially go into that in the future. Um, but I think, yeah, it is important for players to to look at what they're going to do after football because it is obviously, unfortunately, a short career. Um, I wish you could play it for your whole entire life, but unfortunately you cannot do that. So, yeah, so hopefully um, potentially go into coaching or personal training as well. So, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Um, and the B licence, was that a female only B licence that was done? Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to be fair, we've we've been doing, a few of us on the team are doing it. Um, so it's nice to have a few of us doing it at the same time. Um, but yeah, it's a female only. So it's, it's it's really good to have that as well. Yeah. And, and those supports are there um, as well, um, you know, regarding obviously funding from UEFA and stuff like that uh, from coach education, which is which is great. And there has been a lot of female only um, courses um, over the last couple of years and awesome thing all I suppose I'm very passionate obviously as you know about the women's game so air course today was female only starting the girls and the coaches <clears throat> on the pathway you know so mm -hmm. um, and we're very eager to continue now and give me wor more work to do in the summer to give them the next coach all the work. In, in the summer you know so which is great you know so yeah. thanks for that Um, I think there's one there in the chat what was the most memorable match you played oh wow <laughs> Oh, I think it would have to be the Scotland game. Yeah. I think a lot of the girls would say that. I think well, I think all of them would say that because yeah. I think yeah. you do all that work yeah. um, you put in all the hard yards for moments like that in football. And yeah, I think that will that would have to be it. Scottish match. Um there's one here from Martin. Um we've all seen uh, we've seen a photo of, of an iconic picture back in 2002 in the World Cup jersey. Um, what's your favourite jersey? And do you keep your match shorts after you wear them? My favourite jersey probably would have been one of that the ones I wore when I was younger. The retro ones, I really, really like them ones. Um, and do I keep, yeah, I keep my jerseys. My first jersey I have, um, my mom kept that. There's no giving that to anyone <laughs> from my yeah. first cap. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we get to keep our jerseys, which is nice. Um, it's a nice, nice to have as well. Um, at home. I have a few hanging up. I have the Scotland one ha hanging up. I don't think anyone's getting their hands on that one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. Um, another question. I don't know whether Pauline's on the on the call. Why do you do? Why do you do? Why did you want to be a footballer? Sorry. Why did you want to be a footballer? Um. Yeah. So as I just said uh, previous, that I think obviously my sister started playing, and I think I just went down, and I said I instantly just said I, I love the look of that <laughs> and then I went up and started playing and I think I don't know I think it's just something in me that I just it's a part of me at this stage I, I started playing when I was five and honestly I don't know anything other than football really and that's that's just it for me I, I grew up watching playing if I didn't have if I wasn't watching it and I was out kicking the ball against the wall and um, I would hound my dad to come out and stand in a goal so I would batter the ball at him um but yeah, that's. I think it's just just been in me since I was since I was young. And I'm going to ask you: Did you play any other sports in school? Yeah, I actually yeah I played um played Gaelic football for. Oh no, you're not going to away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I did. I enjoyed that to be fair. But no, yeah. it was always my dream to to play for Ireland and play professional. So brilliant. Uh, thanks, Martin. Um, Theresa um is a convoy Arsenal. Do you think the ladies will have? as big opportunities as the men in international football? Um, yeah, to be fair, I think I think the coverage of this World Cup will will tell its own tale. I think this summer it's gonna be it's gonna be huge. I think um with obviously us qualifying for it and just even their first game, it's 
it's hopefully going to be a sellout and I mean the amount of people coming to that game um for women's women's football it just tells its own tale that where where the game is going it's improving and yeah and on that international stage brilliant another one there from Lauren uh it says we missed uh, obviously missed the beginning um I think you were five when you started playing is that right yeah yeah right Five. Uh, what's the most challenging thing about being a pro footballer? Wow. <laughs> uh, the most challenging thing. Um, I think for me, um, I like to to kind of set standards every day, every day in training, every day at a at a when you're playing a game. Um, on me personally, I want to be the best every single day. Um, so that can be challenging in itself, but um. I think that's just me putting putting my own stuff on myself that I want to be the best person in training and I want to win the race. I want to win small sided. Obviously, I want to win the game at the weekend, but that can be difficult at times because sometimes you can be tired. I mean, I don't know, you didn't get enough sleep sleep the night before. Like it, it is tough, but I think you always have to come back to this is your dream to play football. And and yeah, I just think you have to realise that as well. At the end of the day, it's you're not always going to have good days. There is some bad days in it, um, like everything in life, I think. But, yeah. And I think on that, Teresa, I'll, I'll just add to it. Um, there is equal opportunities at the moment, you know, and, and it is getting better. We do have, within the FEI, um, um, coach education, which has a licensed courses. And we've just obviously, I think about two or three weeks ago, uh, Megan Lynch was was um, appointed as the women's under 16s head coach. So um, Megan obviously has been on far as nine, if I'm not mistaken, and yeah. obviously started coaching journey within Carlo IT, I think it was, and um, now previously worked in the as an administrator, but now is going in as a women's under six head coach. So the opportunities are there. And I, they have female uh, assistant coaches or goalkeeping coaches um, and also at schools level which is uh, which is great to see but there are uh, there are huge opportunities being within uh, the FEI um, jo- Joanne if Joanne is here from Step Aside how can we get as coaches and parents to continue to motivate our girls uh, in their late teens to kind of stop them from dropping out basically yeah, I think I think similar to the question we had before, I think we all need to yeah, like take advantage of the fact that we are going to a World Cup and to be I think me, I, I would like to be like some sort of I'm gonna say role model to those those girls that you can play professional, you can go away and this is your job and you can play at a World Cup for your country. And um, so I think for us as players, we like to be visible that that the young kids can see that um, and yeah I think that's that's obviously gonna be helpful this summer um, at a World Cup um, so yeah I think we just need to really take advantage of that and obviously having the likes of these calls and stuff is, is brilliant and I think we need to keep doing that and know Sharon's doing great great work with that um, but yeah I think we need to keep, keep doing that and yeah just just be visible and um, show that visibility um, back to, to younger girls. Brilliant. Um, I think this is from Justin, yeah, from Baldoyle. This is a great question and it's a question that always comes up on courses, whether it be at grassroots level and moving into the elite game. So what do you do to deal or how do you deal with the mental part of the game from club level to international level as there's so much pressure on the players these days? Yeah, it's a very good question um, because there is a lot of pressure. There's no denying it. Um, there's pressure to perform uh, at club and country. Um, but I think for me, um, I have like a good support group around me, um, whether it's my family, um, like friends, partner, anyone. I think it's really, really important to talk, talk about it, talk about how you're feeling, um, how to train and go today, how are you feeling about the game? Um, I think for me, that's it's really important to have that. Um, yeah, whether or whether it is your coach or, or anyone that you you just sit down and have a talk to, um, because yeah, there is no denying that there is it is a pressurized environment and um some people can struggle with that. So I think it's it's so important to to be vocal about it and talk about it. And um for me as well, I always 
like make time to not think about it as well I think you need to kind of have that balance of um making time for yourself and, and not kind of overdoing it with thought as well and yeah just time to to relax and, and settle with it you know yeah and it's really important to have that time away from football you know yeah. whether that's phone you know for me away from football and from work the phone is off and that's it yeah. when I arrive home and the weekends if I'm off the weekends it's like it's 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 walking in the park walking in the beach going out to dinner it's the simplest things but also obviously when when I played and I'm sure Jamie you've just alluded to it the support networks that around you you need to build them up you know with people that you trust and people that you can speak out to so if you're unsure of that and are worried about any players that are here or even coaches go to somebody to trust but do speak don't just keep it to yourself it is really important to uh, to speak out and because there's always help there um and as jamie said it, it doesn't have to be it can be sorry it can be someone in your club it can be a relative it can be an auntie an uncle it can be anybody it can be your coach but please do um speak out if, if you're ever worried about Atten or going into a game that you don't understand what the coach is asking you just ask the question just ask the question. Thanks for that. Um, the question, there's a question on the chat, but it's the same question here. What Irish player is the funniest on the team? <laughs> I think this was said before, yeah. <laughs> oh, we have a few characters on that team, let me tell you. Um, the funniest, um, Rusha is pretty funny. She yeah, makes up yeah. laugh a lot. Um, who else will be up there? Amber Barrett. Maybe you've seen her on the Late Late last week. Um, no, I haven't recorded. <laughs> yeah. She makes us laugh, and maybe Lucy Quinn as well. She's oh, very good. Yeah, yeah. She's a. There's a few of them on the team, so the crack we always have to crack. <laughs> God. Um, just back to the World Cup again. So from Faye, what team do you think will be the hardest to beat in the World Cup? Oh, jeez. Just take the teams win your group for first of all. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, obviously we play. Australia first um yeah we played them in Dublin um yeah they're gonna be a tough team and obviously that's their home nation um so I think that that game will be tough as well um I think all three will be tough to be honest with you um it is a tough group and I think as I said before like it's we're at a world cup so I wouldn't expect any anything less to be honest with you um but we've shown before we, we've been underdogs before and we've gone in and and got the results so yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can do the same. But I think all three, um, Canada and Nigeria, will be there'll be three tough games. Yeah, yeah, they will be. And the recovery, I, I, you know, from being involved with the national teams, recovery is be so important in between games. Um, and just to throw it there, what what type of recovery would you do, say after a game? Um, the day after, sorry, the day after a game. Yeah. Yeah. So the day after a game, um. Uh, me personally, I have like um, stuff I like to do. So, with with the Ireland team, let's say we we everyone goes training. And um, if you don't say maybe play, you do a little session. If you do play, you kind of just do a, a light jog, loosen of the legs, stretching, foam rolling, and um, stuff like that. Pro protein, protein shake into you. Um, and I like to wear like some compression tights and stuff like that. I am um, just to to maximize my recovery really maybe get a bath and stuff like that it's just it's so important to to be recovered um, especially in an international window if you've with those three games like it's so important to to recover because so we play australia it's gonna be 90 plus minutes of of hard hard work and you need to be ready again for the next game to do it to do it all over again so yeah i think the recovery is is going to be key and and yeah Brilliant. Um, and the games are so fast. It's, it's, it's a turnaround. They need to travel yeah. and play. Yeah, they're so fast. Um, Grania has one here from Port Marnock. Um, what advice would you give to young players to get the most out of their training session? Most out of the training? Yeah, like, as I said before, for me, I put it on myself that I want to be the best. I want to be the best player uh, at the training session, not just in a game. So I think that's what you have to kind of tell tell the players that you need to train the way you want to play so you need to go in and and train like you want to play on a Sunday like you can't just turn up on a Sunday and think everything's going to come together for you 
so I think that's that's kind of what I grew up with as well I am you you need to train hard uh, to play hard on a Sunday so I think that that would be the the best kind of advice Brilliant. um Ellie there from Blanchestown this is obviously about the, the National League here I take it what conditions do you feel are needed to keep the players playing in the Irish League yeah, it's a good question to be fair. Um, I think there's no denying that there has been improvements in the National League. I think it's a good league and I think each year it has it's improved, um, whether it's uh, players and um, facilities, um, contracts obviously now coming in this year. So I think it's important to, to highlight that improvement that, that has been there already. Um, because since I since I've been there, the improvements has been immense already, and I've only left maybe two years ago now. Um, so there has been improvements and obviously everyone wants it even coaching um, people that have been away from the league want it to go professional and full time um, but I think we just need to take it step by step and obviously um, acknowledge the improvements that have, have been made and just keep pushing it um, in that direction Brilliant just to add there obviously the players ha- uh, have contracts now you know, that wouldn't have been there yeah. uh, Jamie we were there and they've got the the League of Ireland rights as well so th- it's an opportunity for the girls say in England that are away or in the US or you know in Germany yeah. to, to watch the home base players as well and uh, which is uh, fantastic um, so this is from Ruby um, who's been the most difficult um, player that you've overcome in your career the most difficult player I've played against. Uh, played against, yeah. Probably, um, maybe Sam Kerr. Um, even though we're going to be playing against her, <laughs> and yeah, I think she's obviously a world class player. Um, and maybe we played against obviously her at club level, Chelsea last year, and then with the Irish team. I am um, so she's she's obviously a really good player. Um. Well, maybe Pernell Harder as well with yeah. Chelsea. I mean, Chelsea have a lot of lot of good players. Um, so maybe maybe them too. Yeah. Yeah, I think every player is difficult. They they all bring their different yeah. traits. You know, um, everyone has their own kind of yeah skill set. Yeah. Um. Thanks for that. Uh, Saif here from Bray Wanderers, which is a great question. What pathway did you use to get onto the Irish team? Yeah. So. My Irish career started at under 15s levels, um, so the schools team. So I would have played for the, the Leinster team um, and then obviously got selected out of that to play for the schools team, the Irish under 15 schools team. Um, then went on to play with Sharon at under 16s level um, and then went on to play with um, the under 17s and then the under 19s. Yeah, and that's then. Brilliant. And yeah. that's and that would be the pathway at the moment within the FEI. Obviously, the schools, so yeah. um, selection uh, with Richie at schools level, and um, obviously there Megan's been um, put in for the next couple of months um, at under 16s, which is fantastic. And then moving on to now James Scott, who's women's under 17s, and then Dave Connell at 19s. So there is a pathway there, um, for those that are on the call that would like to, you know, uh that want to that want to know and even support the girls as well which is fantastic and um, thanks for that um <laughs> Aoife from St. E- Aoife from St. Eats has asked how what's it like playing against your teammates <laughs> yeah it's it's a bit of a weird one <laughs> um <laughs> obviously international team like last year we play against Katie, me, Fahey, Leanne, Leanne Kerr. like every, you play against them and then you'd be uh, kicking kicking each other and then go into camp the next day like it's it's just football really and then at the end of the day we're best mates we know we are um, but yeah you just kind of get used to that really at, um, at club level and then going into international I think we all know we're mates <laughs> <laughs> very good um, there's a question on the chat but it's the same question I think here the one in the chat is from Isabella and this one here is from Neve. Um, who was your biggest inspiration it's okay Jamie it's okay <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, my biggest inspiration I think from a kind of a role model athlete um, kind of type would be um, Katie Taylor uh, yeah. to be fair um, just because she's an all around athlete um, I'm very humble in how she goes about her business. Like, um, so yeah, I think her to be fair. And 
even on the Ireland team, for me, I would look up to the likes of Denise O'Sullivan. I am. Um, I think she's a just an elite player and um, top professional as well. And I think it's so good to have players like her on on the team to look up to. And um, obviously, I'm in between. I'm not. I'm not quite a senior player, but I'm not quite a young one. So I'm in between. So it's nice to have like players like her to look up to and and stuff like that. So yeah. And the, the pathway they come that way at schools like Kate, uh, Megan, and um, at schools went into 16s, moved on to 17s, 19s, and now in seniors. And some of them, for those that don't know, the likes of Megan, Grace, um, Denise would have played at the women's under 17 world cup which i was involved yeah. in back in the you hotel know, tell you the year 2010 so that's telling you um, so that would have been first underage um squad to get to a women's world cup was back in 2010 so the likes of them players would have played there so the experience now of these going into the world cup would, will be great and we'll know and we'll be able to bring that um experience to the younger players and to the mediocre players there jamie okay. and to some <laughs> of the older players that we didn't quite make it to a world cup yeah um, um back then um there's another question here in the chat which is a good question um from Mar is it martin again yeah um how do you relax when you're away and uh, do you listen to podcasts <laughs> green machine football is a good one that must be martin's podcast <laughs> or do you want <laughs> <Have> uh, <a laughs> excuse me do you watch films and tv series is favorite music and stuff yeah, to be fair, like um, when we're away in camp, we do have time to, time to ourselves and, and Vera gives us that. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the girls and myself, we, we go out for coffee and stuff um, and most of the time not really talk about football just to kind of get away from it, you know what I mean? Um, um, and yeah, so that that's nice to have, um, to have that. Um, yeah, I would also listen to podcasts. Um, I like to listen to podcasts when I'm driving to training and stuff like that. Um, music obviously and then yeah listen or watching watching tv series and and stuff but i think it's important to have those have those things just to get take your mind off stuff and, and as we said before just relax and, and not kind of think about anything else yeah i think that's good self-care as well uh Jane. Yeah. and it's very very important uh self-care for everybody on the call uh, including our own staff that are here <laughs> um who was your favorite footballer when you were younger my favourite footballer was Garrett. Stephen Gerrard. Yeah. yeah, get in! Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. was the one I yeah really, really liked and um, watched every weekend. Um, just think he was such a good player and I think a player I wanted to be, just kind of stuck in midfielder. Um, but yeah, I really, really liked him growing up. Brilliant. Uh, Celine here says, um, are you excited to get to a quarterfinal of a Women's FA Cup? Yeah, um, really excited for that one. I think um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good game. We play Brighton at home, um, so yeah, it's we played them a, a couple of times. Um, they're a tough team to be fair, but yeah, um, we're obviously gonna gonna try our best and, and hopefully go all the way to Wembley. That would be nice. That's brilliant. Yeah, um, I think we might come and see it in Wembley. I'll travel to Wembley. Really? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Isabel here says, uh, "How many hours a week do you train?" Uh, maybe if you want to give us maybe your schedule so say you have a game Sunday what happens yes. then from Monday leading in yeah yeah so if we, if we play well majority of our games are Sunday so we play Sunday and um, then we have Monday off and um, so we are responsible for our own recovery which is which is fair we're, we're professional athletes so we need to do that ourselves um, uh, Tuesday we come in it will be a lighter session for those who who played the game um, it'd be like um, recovery type session and the players who who didn't play would would do a session um and then Wednesday would be our toughest session maybe like an hour an hour and a half on the pitch um and then we have a gym session on a Wednesday as well after that that would be maybe max an hour um and then on Thursday we have a rest day as well so we're off um and then Friday back in Friday would be more so kind of looking at um a game plan coming into the to the game uh, on Sunday. We would touch on it on Wednesday as well, just to kind of have it in a, in our minds. Uh, and then Friday we really go into it, and um, that would be like an hour, an hour and twenty minutes. And then we have another gym session after that. And then Saturday we're in. Saturday is kind of like 
fun but also set pieces as well so Saturday would be it would fairly light um it'd be like an hour we do like um small sided games just getting us sharp really for Sunday um but yeah it'll be an hour in and out and then Sunday for for the match again brilliant and following on into that question is a great question Callie what do you eat before a game yeah, so obviously um, nutrition is so important as an athlete. Um, it doesn't just happen on, on the, the day of the game. I think a couple of days before, it's really important to look at that um, to kind of carb load as well as it is a word used a lot. Um, so I think the day or two before the game, I would increase, say, my carbs that I'm eating. So if I say you like rice or pasta just add a bit more of that into it so that you're fueled then for the game so we're not just eating loads of carbs on a Sunday just to try and get through 90 minutes it starts two or three days before adding that bit more each day and and obviously um hydration as well and so that's really really important and I think just about your international career what what was it uh, this is from Rose. How old were you when you first played your first uh, international? Um, so, like underage, do you think? Do you yeah, think? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, I think, thirteen playing for the under 15s Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another question from is it Rose again? Just asking, what goes through your head during a big match? Um, during a big match. To be fair, I do I do still get nervous for every game. I think nerves are a good sign. Um, it means that you want to you want to win. You want you, you know you you're. It's important to you. You know what I mean. Um, but to be fair, once the whistle goes, I don't think I really think of anything but but what's happening on the pitch. You know, so everything goes out of my head, and I'm just focused on on the on the game really. Brilliant. Um, and Garrett wants to know, is Kate McCabe a good captain? <laughs> Kate McCabe. Of course she is. Of yeah. course. She's, uh, yeah. She's just got she's... her team to a World Cup, you know, yeah. so and I think I think that says it all. Um, let me see. Rose again. Uh, you said Stephen Gerrard. Who was your most player you looked up to? Yeah. Um, what was the hardest team you ever played against? Hardest team... Um, probably would have been Sweden. We just recently yeah. played them. Um, that was away as well. Um, so they're ranked, I think, at that stage, they maybe second or third. Um, in the world, I mean, that speaks for itself, really. Um, they were, yeah, obviously really tough, tough to play against. Had like such good players. Um, and they played well together as well. But um, yeah, we we kind of dug deep in that in that game and and got uh, the draw in the end. But yeah, they were they were very tough. I think that was the, 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 the pinnacle of the of the group, if that makes yeah. sense. I think that's yeah. you know results, you know. Um, there's no name here. So phone, and uh, we think Amy answered that she through the FEI system at a younger age, and she did. She went through from fifth all the way up to the uh, same level. Um, what's the most important attribute as a footballer? Uh, the um, I think it would be having a good attitude. Um, I think, I think you need to you need to kind of understand that it's it's a team game, um, and you need to be at your best. I think and have a, a good a good attitude whether you're playing or you're not playing. I think it comes down to it's a squad game, and you need to be at your best attitude, um, whether that's happening for you or not. Um, so I think. For me, that would be I am um, having a good attitude um, around. Yeah, it's really, really important. Um, another question there from Ellie uh, Ward. You've played a lot of different positions for Birmingham and for Ireland. What position do you find most natural? Good question. <laughs> um, I think I've played everywhere, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've played yeah. everywhere, um, especially this season as well. Um, to be fair with me, um, I hope Sharon says the same. Like I, I will just give a hundred percent in any position that that I the manager wants me to play in. Um, I don't really have a preference once once I'm on the pitch. Um, I don't really care. You know, it's 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 so important to play, and I think if the manager puts you in a position, yeah, you just need to give it a hundred percent, and and yeah, just just do that. And I think 
for me, I think it's kind of served me because I played in a lot of positions and I think yeah, it shows your versatility as well um, to managers, which is, I think, a good thing. Um, so, yeah, I think so, yeah. I don't think you ever played in goal, Jamie. I didn't torture you to put you in goal at any stage. I mean, I probably would have said yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Faye says time, here, yeah. Yeah. do you find it hard to continue um, a match if you're losing? Yeah, like we've been having this conversation at Birmingham um, lately that I think if we go a goal down or two goals down, I think, again, it comes back to belief that you're going to score, that you have players in the team that will score. I think if you get bogged down and, oh, we're one or two nil down, game's over, then the game it will be over. Um, if it's over in your head, it's over on the pitch. So you need to really, really, like, put it in your mind that, listen, it's okay if you go a goal or two down. And we have players that will score and you need to believe in that as well. So, yeah, it comes back to that belief in, in yourself and obviously the players around you. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really important. Um, you've said what you've done in your free time. Um, what, uh, what are the most nervous, sorry, what are you most ne nervous for about the upcoming World Cup? What am I most nervous for? Um, as I, I touched on before, I, I think I do get nervous, obviously, um, before games, and these are going to be big games, but I think you need to just control that. Um, I think you work so hard to get to a stage in your career, like a World Cup or a Euros or, or anything in life. You work so hard to get there. I think you just need to recognise your nerves and kind of control them um, because you don't want them to take over in such an important time in your career and, and stuff. Um, thanks for that. Vanessa then says, and a great question, do you have a sports psychologist available at your club or country? That's the first part of it. And have you in, ever engaged with support for the mental side of the game? Yeah, to be fair, we do. We do have that um, available available to us, um, which is, which is it, it's so important um, to have that available and to kind of make use of it as well. I think sometimes it's easy to say, yeah, it's available and you don't make use of it. I mean, if something like that is available to you, you need to you need to go and use it because um, it'll only benefit you. Um, it'll only benefit your performance and and where you want to get at. Um, so I think it's so important if that's available to you to, to go and use it. But yeah, I think it's shown as well how far, how far it's kind of gotten that stuff like that is available to us. Um, I mean, it's brilliant. And again, I think, if it is, you only need to take take advantage of that, really. And as, as we said earlier as well, Jamie, using the support systems as well is important. You know, yeah. if you don't as well, we're in your club or in your country or it's just life in general. Yeah. Um, Faye is just asking here, how would you get, like, how would you pump yourself up for a game? Or like your routine, say, for a game? Yeah, for a game, to be fair, um, with, with, the, with the Irish team, um, we normally obviously go by bus and I think, at that stage, everyone just kind of has their their earphones in. They're listening to their own their own music, kind of, um, and then everyone into the dressing room, and then our music is playing there. And I think everyone kind of has their own little thing they do. They go around. I kind of get myself ready, do a bit of stretching, do a bit of pre act stuff before um, before the game, and yeah, just kind of focusing on my tasks and kind of going over my whether it's set pieces or where I have to be for corners or who I'm picking up and stuff like that I just kind of go over that so that's fresh in my mind before I go out as well brilliant just well I think there's a couple of more questions and I think we're nearly there um this again is from uh iPhone <laughs> do you have a pair of lucky boots that you always wear yeah, to be fair, I wear um the ones I always wear, the Nike Phantoms Elite. I always wear them, but in different colours. So um I always always try and get them, although I think they might be going running out of stock. So I think that's a problem. <laughs> I think me and me and Lucy, Lucy Quinn has the same pair. She always wears them as well. So I don't know, we're gonna be stuck now. I think we need to buy in bulk for the next four months <laughs> like Argus get to Argus quick before it closes yeah. down <laughs> yeah. um, one from Rose here says what has been the best football pitch that you've played on good question um, best football pitch probably to be fair my my um, uh, debut for Birmingham we played against Spurs in the Spurs stadium the new one that was 
that was amazing. The pitch was was carpet. Dressing rooms were just state of the art. So I think I think that one would have been. I'm yet to play in Anfield, so I think that would be mine if I'm if I was to play there. <laughs> and this is from Caitlin. Uh, what is your favorite? It says drill to do in training. So obviously, what's your favorite practice? What do you like uh, practicing in training? Um, I think I touched on it there. So Saturdays we do a um, small sided game. So where the goals are really, really tight. Um, lots sh shots flying everywhere, bodies flying everywhere. Um, and we do at Birmingham like a three team game. So there'd be two, two maybe, um, say like five on each team. Uh, three teams, so two playing, and then the rest on the outside. So I really like that because it's small, uh, um, and yeah, just intense and. Yeah, I think I, I like that of a Saturday. And I think if you win, you get bragging rights for the week then. So <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind being on that team. Um, yeah. Another one there. Who's the most famous soccer player you've ever met? Question. The most famous soccer player I've ever met. Mm. Um, Go with from... male, and f male and female. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. From the Irish men's team I've met a few of them Shea Given um, who really uh, kind of stood out for me is Seamus Coleman um, he's a he's a gent um, he always has time for for talking to us um, uh, so I really really liked him um, and then the female probably as I said who I played against maybe Sam Kerr Neil Harder um, stuff like I think them, them would kind of stick out for me um, obviously they're kind of the superstars of, of the WSL as well. So, yeah, maybe them too. Brilliant. I'll ask you then, just to, to wrap up here, question, we have, we have parents, parents call, coaches on the call, players on the call. What would you, if I was to say to you, any little tips for coaches, what would you give them that are on the call, uh, coaches first? Sorry, Sharon, say that again. I think it went off a bit. Sorry. Um, what little tips would you give to coaches that are on the call regarding if they want to progress in their career, first of all? Yeah, I think for coaches, um, I think it. I'm going to come back to, to what I said about uh, the, in, the, in the first half about believing in yourself. I think it doesn't have to be if you want to coach a team to get to a world cup or a team to get to a euros it could be a team to like everyone has their own individual things and i think no dream is too small so i think for that i think you just need to obviously as i said believe in yourself and and what you want to achieve and obviously don't stop until you actually achieve that brilliant and i'll take these last three questions in the chat okay uh first one's from uh, tina how did you deal with the pressure of soccer at an elite level at such a young age yeah um i think i was really like in the environment at a young age and i think that that helped me i think going to rohini at such i think it was 15 16 i think that really helped me to be around that environment and kind of to know what's expected of me really um, and how yeah if I want to make it I need to to be better uh, each training session each game and yeah for me I think yeah that just kind of being exposed to that at a young age and I think it does come back to what we said is is talking and and talking to someone and just getting how you're feeling out um, because if you're feeling pressure, then your teammate beside you is feeling pressure too, I think. So everyone goes through what you're feeling as well. Brilliant. Um, second last, um, is there any tips for improving sh your shooting? Like shooting sure. tips I have, yeah. For me, it's practice. Um, every, like practice, practice, practice. As I said, when I was younger, I was always out with the ball. Um, and if my dad didn't come out, I was bouncing it against the wall. Um, so I think it's just, it's practice, um, whether it's in training or getting your own little session in as well. I am um, maybe going to training five minutes earlier, getting five footballs and, and, and going through it, you know what I mean? Or staying behind, asking the coach, can we do a little one-on-one -on -one session for five minutes afterwards? Can we do a, a few, few shooting um, drills? Because 
to be fair, even now, um, the girls on our team, um, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. Um, so everyone has their own little thing they want to improve on. And even me still, obviously, I want to improve my game. So I get one-on-one. -on -one, um, as if you want it, if you want to improve, if you want to go to the coach and say, listen, can we have 10 minutes before the session? I want to work on my, I don't know, clearances, my heading, my shooting, anything like that. So I think you need to take it upon yourself to... To, to practice or, or ask a coach to listen, can, we, can I have five minutes of your time just to, yeah, to, to go through something? And I think Kelly's asking about <laughs> nutrition. Um, would you recommend avocado on toast for breakfast Ooh. before a training session or a match? Before, yeah, I am. Um, I I would eat the avocado on toast. So obviously the avocado is your, is your fats that you're going to get from that. Um, and if you like maybe I don't know eggs to add in a bit of protein as well on top of that um, so I would have um, for breakfast sometimes I would have that avocado on toast and throw in some some scrambled eggs as well just to get that protein source brilliant and I'll end on this from Martin because it's a lovely lovely message best of luck at the World Cup we are all behind you and the girls um, come on you girls in green uh, thanks for your time and to everyone for organising. So thanks, um, Martin, for that. It's nice to end on on that um, yeah. for this evening. Um, so just just to wrap up, just to say thanks again to to everyone for um, coming on and giving up your evening or your training time or um, you know those that had training or if you didn't go tra if you didn't go training. Okay. Um, thanks again and to the staff that are on the call and. Uh, obviously to, to Jamie for giving up her time from me and from everyone here uh, you know I will be speaking to you before the end of the before you go to the World Cup but best of luck really you know in the World Cup and um, everyone here is behind you and I'm sure the country and Ryan Tuberty and all is behind you so you know things are looking up uh, when you go okay Sharon can we just ask them to turn on the cameras can we turn oh, yeah yes if we can get everyone a picture turn off, we turn do a gallery for, view yeah. yeah can everyone just yeah can everyone just yeah. turn off Two things. Turn off your camera. Off. Turn on your or camera. On. Turn on your on. camera. Yeah. Oh, put your camera on there and get, and get your, make sure the mirror is near. Where's the mirror? Hold on. <laughs> Fix your hair. Yeah, forget, yeah, hold on. Didn't do me nails. Hold on. Um, <laughs> Trina just wants to do a, pi uh, a picture for picture. Twitter. And she can tell you then. We'll get do the full screen and then we'll do, yeah, wait now. We'll see. Can we get it with many people as we can? <laughs> Lure me out. Lure no, no. <laughs> Chuck off your video. <laughs> That's great. And I'm going to take another one. There's two screens of you. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and finally, I don't know, I think Tracy just put it up there in the chat. There's um Jamie signed the poster. If you just download the poster, it's in the chat there. You'll see it. Um, it's just a little token that you can take away from this evening's um uh, webinar. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. Um, and please, before the end, before the World Cup, I might see if I can rack in another one or two players to um, to um, give you their experiences of, of going into the World Cup and where it all began for them, as as Neil Diamond said. Isn't that what they said for all you people out there? Yeah. Um, other than that, thanks very much for uh, tuning in and best of luck in your coaching career, your playing career. And um, without you, players... And um, without you volunteers, you know, we wouldn't have as many players as we have coming through the system. So um, thanks again. OK, thank yeah. you. Thanks, everyone, for your time. Well. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, everyone.